In today's video, I'm going to be discussing five ways to save $100 or more per month, and it's pretty easy. I have all the information for you right here in the video. Let's get into it and discuss all the details. All right, now first off, do you wanna save $100 or more per month, and it's only gonna take a little bit of your time to implement this? I'm not sure about you, but that sounds pretty appealing to me, and it's very, very easy. This can easily be done by most people, and again, I'm gonna bring you all those details here in this video. Let's get into it and talk through the list one by one. However, really fast before we do, can I ask a huge favor of you? If you have not done so yet, will you please make sure to join the other nearly half a million people here on the channel by subscribing, by hitting the subscribe button right down below the video. Thank you, I truly do appreciate it. And also, do your friends, family, and social media a huge favor. Share this video with them with the share button right down below as well. We just wanna do what we can to help everybody out right now. If you look at the statistics, if you look at all the reports, like virtually nobody has any money right now. So saving an extra $100 a month with a little bit of effort Effort, not much, I promise. It would be pretty cool, right? I'm not sure about you, but that is very exciting to me. Getting what you're already getting for less money is always a really nice thing, right? So anyway, thanks for joining me. Please subscribe down below and feel free to share the video with your friends on my social media and uh, let's talk through these one at a time. All right, so number one, and again, I wanna pre uh, preface this really quickly by saying some of these may sound obvious, but here's the thing. Sometimes the easy, sometimes the obvious is also very easy and obvious to just dismiss and be like, ah, it's not there, right? The easy to do is also the easy not to do, okay? So anyway, some of these may seem obvious, but um, let me tell you all the details about them and exactly how to approach these, okay? All right, so number one, negotiate your rent, okay? Now again, this is something that most people don't even recognize you can do. Absolutely, you can negotiate your rent. It's just like buying a car. You better not pay sticker price for a car, just like rent. You probably shouldn't pay sticker price for your rent either. Negotiate it, okay? Uh, here's the thing. I want to throw a couple things out there. If you were to go back and uh, when it comes time for your renewal of your lease, let's just say that your landlord presents you with, I don't know, three different options to renew, something like that. Maybe like a, a six month, uh, an 18 month, a 12 month. I don't know, something like this. Okay. A lot of times they'll give you different dollar amounts for each different time frame that you want to renew, right? Well, here's the thing. Maybe you go to them and say, hey, I'll renew for 24 months or 36 months, two or three years. And they say, you know, let's just say that they want, I don't know, $1,100 for a 12 month, um, you know, something like that. You could go back and say, hey, I'll do a 24 month or a 36 month if you can do a thousand or if you can do 975 or something like that, okay? Here's another thing that I wanna point out really quickly. When you ask for this, ask for more than what you think they're going to give you or even more than what you actually want in the first place. For example, let's just say that you want a $100 per month discount on your rent. Ask for 150, why? Because they're gonna negotiate back. They're gonna counter offer and they're gonna say something like, well, how about X dollars, and right? So then you can still fall back on what you actually want, but ask for more than what you really do want the first time so that when you get a counter offer from your landlord, there you go. You just got exactly what you wanted in the first place. And if for some weird reason, the person doesn't negotiate back, if they don't counter offer you, well, voila, you just got more money off then. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan to me, right? It's a win-win no matter how you cut it. So that is number one that I want to bring to your attention. Now, let's just talk about homeowners really quickly. This is number two. If you have a mortgage, here's what I would recommend doing calling your mortgage holder, whoever that is, the bank, whoever it is that holds your mortgage, say, hey, um, maybe we could look at a, a refinance. Now, right now, probably is not the best time to re, uh, refinance because interest rates are so incredibly high, but when interest rates come down, or at some point, if your interest rate is higher than what we're currently sitting in now, you may want to reach out to them and say, hey, let's discuss a refinance. What do you think? And they'll say, oh, we'd love to do a refinance. Why? Because they get tons and tons of fees on refinances. But you say, um, sorry, here's the kicker. I want a zero out of pocket, a zero fee refinance, okay? And they'll say, oh, we don't do that. Really? Yeah, come on, you do. They do. Absolutely, they do, okay? Some of these uh, these uh, these banks and different financial institutions, they absolutely do zero dollar refinancing, okay? Especially if you're a current client, hey, just lock me in for a lower rate. That's all I'm looking for. Maybe give me a little cash as you do it too, because you could grab, you could pull out a little bit of cash at the same time if you were to do that, okay? So that is option number two. Talk about a refinance, probably not the best of all the options, but it is a thing that you could talk about, okay? That's number two. Now, number three, this is another key one as well. Most people don't realize you can do this, but this is a really good one as well. 
uh, get your your uh, insurance agent, whoever that person might be, or whoever your insurance is, shop new insurance policies, okay? It could be homeowner's insurance, it could be renter's insurance, it could be auto insurance, whatever it happens to be, shop your policy. You should be shopping your policy probably every year, every year and a half, maybe every two years at the absolute most, okay? So if you have an insurance agent or whoever you have your insurance through, again, your homeowner's insurance, renter's insurance, auto insurance, whatever it happens to be, shop these policies. You don't, you, you wouldn't believe how much of a savings you can get. This could save you $100 a month alone just on doing this, okay? This one thing alone right here, shopping your insurance policies, okay? So again, have somebody look around. If you have an insurance agent that you work with, say, hey, can you shop my policy? If they don't, if you don't tell them to do this, they're not automatically going to do it. Why would they? Okay. They do not automatically do this. You might think, oh, they're getting me the best deal and they're looking out for me. No, they're not. They're looking out for their commission. That's what they're looking out for. Okay. When you sign a policy under that insurance agent, they get a commission for as long as you have that policy. Okay. So they're not looking out for you. I'm sorry. Okay. This is not the world in which we look out for each other anymore we look out for our own best interest a lot of times when it comes down to things like this, okay? So again, I just want to point that out for you really quickly. Have them shop your, uh, shop your policy. You can probably get comparable, comparable coverages to what you're currently having right now for probably less if you look around enough, okay? You can probably find something even though interest rates have gone up Sorry, not interest rates. Insurance uh, premiums have gone up a ton over the last couple of years here. You can probably still look around and find something uh, that might be worth your time looking at. Now, here's another uh, good one as well. This is number four, okay? Let's look at your auto insurance, okay? Going back to insurance here, look at your auto insurance. What kind of coverages do you have? Now, I wanna preface this by really quickly by saying, make sure that you're holding the coverages that are required within your state if you are in a state that requires auto insurance. Not all states recover, uh, require auto insurance or you know full coverage, things like that, okay? But make sure that you have the coverage that is consistent with the state that you live in. But let's just say that you live in a state that does not require full coverage, but they require a minimum of liability. You may wanna reduce your policy just to liability. In other words, if you get in an accident, somebody gets hurt, you're covered with liability coverages. But if you're driving down the street and you whack a tree and you total your car, well then I'm sorry, you're out, <laughs> okay? <laughs> liability does not cover that, but it does cover, uh, um, if you have full coverages, it would cover that, okay? Now, in this case alone, this could save you hundreds of dollars as well by reducing full coverages and just having liability. This may be a thing as well. You may wanna look at just having liability coverage on your vehicle, but again, please do your own research. This is different all across the country. You've gotta do whatever is consistent with your state. And again, if you're working with an auto uh, an insurance um, agent, they'll tell you they'll be like hey i'm sorry you gotta have this coverage it's by law in this state you must have this okay so again they'll probably work with you on that but that's another thing as well by reducing your coverages there or you know adjusting your coverages a little bit you could save a lot of money really quickly in fact i'll give you a personal little story um our personal vehicle okay full coverage and again, the person, the um, the insurance agent I was working with said, if you just have liability, you could save $472 just by having uh, liability versus full coverage. It's a lot of money, $472 just by reducing from full coverage down to just liability. Not a bad savings, right? An extra 472 for just literally having like a three minute conversation. That's it, sounds pretty cool to me, right? All right, now next, I want to talk about utility services, okay? This could be your gas provider, your water provider, your um, electricity provider, whatever it happens to be, whoever provides your utilities, call them one by one and say, hey, yo, um, water provider, do you possibly have free complimentary things like faucets or shower heads or anything like this to help me reduce my water consumption? Believe it or not, they do have it, okay? It's a real thing. A lot of these places do have complimentary uh, different fixtures that you can get sent to you, like a low flow faucet, a low flow um, toilet uh, flapper or whatever. Um, a low flow shower head. You can have these things sent to you 100% for free. Well, guess what this does? Not only does it spice up your shower or your maybe bathroom or <laughs> something like this, you get a nice new little fixture in there, but it saves you money at the same time because you're, you're using less water, therefore you're using less resources and your water bill every month or every quarter, whenever you get it, 
is also a little bit less, right? So there you go. You're saving a little bit of money there as well. And you got yourself a nice new shiny shower head that's not all corroded anymore, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, who has a corroded shower head? I hope I'm not the only one, right? <laughs> seriously, oh, that would be embarrassing if I'm the only one to like, dude, I don't have a corroded shower head. Well, I guess you know now, corroded shower head here, okay? Anyway, that's an option as well. And it's pretty nice because you get to um, save some money there with your water usage. Now, next, let's just say that you reach out to, I don't know, some of your other providers as well. Like, let's just say your electricity provider. Maybe they have something um, where they have some kind of program or something where you could, um, they could offer some type of reduced rate or something like this. Here's another pro tip as well. Uh, ask for off-peak pricing, okay? This is another thing that most people don't realize is a thing. Off-peak, do you know what that is? Have you ever heard about it? Call your service provider, your electricity service provider, and they'll say, oh yeah, off peak, we can do that. Usually it saves about 20 to 30 to $35 a month alone just using off peak. This is pretty cool. I do this my per, uh, my personal self here, okay? It's a pretty cool thing. Just by signing up for off peak, they took 20 bucks off my bill every single month just for having off peak. Not to mention as well, the rates on off peak electricity are also quite a bit less, okay? Because here's what they do. Now, off-peak is generally, um, when you're doing things like, you know, using the water heater, if you have an electric, electric water heater or other things like that, they basically reduce the use of that until off-peak. In other words, the peak uh, when people use their electricity the most is usually 8 a.m. to about 8 p.m. is kind of the window in which they have. So off-peak would basically be 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So a lot of the times they use this off-peak electricity. It's less expensive per kilowatt hour that you get to use. Awesome, you get to save some money there. Plus a little bit of a premium because you get to save the $20 or whatever it is a month on your service because you're signed up for off-peak service as well, okay? So again, like for me personally, this saves probably 20, 30, well, twenty dollars alone, I know saves just because I've signed up for Off Peak, but because I um, we're also using the the lower kilowatt hour pricing um, on this alone, saves probably thirty thirty five bucks a month alone just on the electricity bill. Not bad. Again, I'll take it. Right. I've by the way, I've never seen a disruption or never seen anything adverse to the electricity um, because of using Off Peak. Never ever never had a problem with it whatsoever. So. Not another really good option there. So these are one of the one to talk about really quickly. Now again, there's a million different options that you could explore to save yourself a hundred dollars plus a month. But these are some I want to share with you here in this video. I can come back in a separate video if you want me to and share with you a whole bunch more. There's tons of different ways uh, that you can save a bunch of money. So. If you've not done so, again, please subscribe down below. Totally free to do so. Share this video with your friends on your social media. Again, a big share button right down below. Go and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel, including those down below in the description at the top of the comment section. I've hand selected some for you there. Otherwise, right now, popping up on your screen, you'll see some videos. So until next time, enjoy your day. Take care. I hope you take action on some of these. Start saving yourself some money. It'll make a big difference. It's going to take a little bit of time on your part to make the necessary phone calls or things like that, but um, it's not much, okay? Go ahead and do it, and um, I'll be very curious to see what you save on this, and I'll be very happy for you as well. Anyway, enjoy your day. Take care, and I'll catch you.